the rumors have been flying around for a while, but it seems like they are intensifying. Apple and OpenAI are rumored to be working on a project together that's going to get announced at their big WWDC event. It sounds like a, a wrestling event, but no, this is Apple's big, uh, uh, this their big announcement where they kind of go over with developers what they're working on and some exciting new updates that's coming to the platform or to their operating system. Um, and it looks like, I mean, there's a lot of speculation on what this partnership is going to look like. A lot of people are kind of leaking, look, OpenAI and, and Apple, they're going to have this thing. My assumption is it's going to be Siri. I'd be curious what what your thoughts are on it, Jamie. Yeah, I don't know. if look, Do you think they'll still call it Siri, though? That's Because I feel like that's a, almost like a brand change or brand integration with ChatGPT. I don't know. Apple seems pretty good at, like, not rebranding. You know who's terrible at this is, like, Google, like, they already went from Google Bard to Google Gemini. They just like rebranded like six months or a year later because Google Bard like was so bad. Um, I feel like Apple doesn't rebrand stuff very often. Even something like Siri, which like for the last few years has been notoriously bad. Everyone knows how bad Siri is. Everyone's like, I use Siri to set a timer on my phone and that is the only thing I ever use it for ever. Like this thing could be an amazing assistant. They could have come up with an AI model two years ago. I like ChatGPT, they had the, the money, the resources, the research and the talent. They didn't do it. So a lot of people would be like, oh, it's a it's like a branding nightmare. Just change the name from Siri to something else. I think they keep the Siri name because Apple's a little prideful and will probably double down on it. Um, but I think uh, and I think that it's maybe not a bad idea because if they come up with a brand new branded assistant while they like pull an open AI, for example, then people kind of like put the two together like, oh, Siri or or, or this new thing is OpenAI, where in the future, my assumption is like they'll pull OpenAI in for now, but they're going to be paying API calls to OpenAI. So my assumption is they'll pull OpenAI in for now while they build their own AI model and they'll eventually swap it out. That's what I'm assuming. Yeah. And I mean, I think I think we are spot on when you uh, make the assumption that it's going to be just like a, an assistant for you. That's, I mean, the most practical use case for AI, at least right now for the average person. Um, so and, and we talked about this on our last podcast where, you know, Google search now, I don't even like click on any websites. I just take the AI summary if I'm looking for the answer to a question. Um, maybe I trust it too much, but I think um, it saves me a lot of time researching. So take that to like other, uh, you know, tasks people do on their phones, even like searching through an old text message for a photo or uh, a phone number or contact. You could just um, ask Siri 2.0 <laughs> or whatever it is integrated with ChatGPT and um, it'll find the information for you plus, you know, tons more. So um, I don't know. I, I feel like the, and all this news is speculative that they're going to go with ChatGPT. I think they will. Uh, is there any reason for them to go with, with Gemini, with Google, or do you, or do you agree with Yeah, I mean, there, there's this whole thing, because that was the rumor first was Gemini, and then OpenAI came out with their GPT-4.0 and gave all their demos, and then Google had their Google I.O. event. And the Google I.O. event and the OpenAI event both were showing kind of like cameras, cool camera stuff that they could do. Uh, where you could like video chat with the their assistant. I think they're going to go with OpenAI if if for nothing else because um, so there's a reason they'd go with Google. But I think they'll go with OpenAI for nothing else because the technology is further ahead. So Google at their Google I/O conference revealed some very similar stuff to GPT 4.0, but they they're like their deadlines and timelines for getting it into the public is like six months to a year. So. Whereas OpenAI is like, yeah, we'll be rolling this stuff out pretty shortly. Uh, you'll be getting a lot of these features very soon in the in the next weeks, they're saying. So I think OpenAI is a lot further ahead to actually having this ready for production. Um, and because of that, I think Apple would probably be partnering with someone like that. Now, the big thing that's really interesting here, and I think this is really key, is you're trying to think of like, how am I going to be making money off of this? Or how am I going to be using this to help inside of my business so that I'm being more productive or my employees are being more productive? The thing that's important here is Apple is famous for, of course, security, the big push they've been pushing for a while, but also on device. So my assumption is Apple's going to try to get some sort of on device AI model. They've been, and maybe if it's not this next iPhone, it'll be the one after. There've been a lot of rumors, people talking about the new chips and how great the new Apple chips are at running AI models and how they're really focusing on that. Um, they have great infrastructure. They have great manufacturing. Apple, eventually where they're going is having it. So when you are on your iPhone, you do not need the internet. You can run an AI model. You can run a chat GPT, for example, directly on device. And so I think this is where they'll probably be going with this. There's a bunch of benefits, of course, not needing the internet's a huge benefit. Although there's probably like if you have the internet, it can grab links and 
and stuff. So like there's there's also a lot of valuable value to having the internet, but on device, uh, the internet is not a problem. And also the security is not a problem because if you have this AI model that you're like, it's a, it's a phone camera and you're sh- shining this thing all around your house showing stuff, all of that uh, has to get sent to a cloud somewhere. And especially if they're using a third party like OpenAI, there's just security vulnerabilities. Um, they want to keep it on device. People feel better knowing, you know, they could do this. I don't know if the the video chat functionality would ever get on device because that seems like quite an intensive compute. But maybe some of the more simple uh, chatting features, they, they could do that. So I think it'll be interesting. What do you think the benefits or what do you think would change, let's say, if Siri all of a sudden is integrating with GPT-40? And I guess, how do, how do you think that will impact the the field? I mean, I think it'll be, I'll start using Siri more. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, for one, I'll start using it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think it's going to be, uh, people are going to find you know new ways to use it in, in practical ways. And I think, It'll probably make for some pretty good uh, content online, really. I mean, just uh, seeing how people come up with just creative ways to use AI. But I just think, um, you know, I know, Jaden, you are very familiar. Jaden, I know, has at least one virtual assistant. Uh, I do not. However, I do wish sometimes that I had one uh, to do. Everyone should get one. Huge proponent. (laughs) um, To do tasks. And I feel like we're getting closer to, closer and closer to having essentially a, a free one, you know, if they integrate it with with the iPhone. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I do have a question for you, Jaden. Um, you know, on this channel or on this podcast before we've talked about how, how the prompting makes all the difference with your results you get from chat GPT. Do you believe that still to be true or do you think it's the lines are blurring and it's becoming easier for people to, uh, get good results? I think the lines definitely are blurring. Um, but at the same time, I think your prompt is really important. And I like I have a disagreement with this uh, on with a bunch of different people. So like, that's totally cool. But my thing is, when people are like, oh, no, ChatGPT is going to replace everyone and do stuff like when I ask ChatGPT to do something like for marketing, for example, I'm like so specific. I know exactly what I like want it to do the exact strategy. I'm like, make sure to reference this, make sure to say this. Don't mention this. Always say this. Like I have like just from my own marketing background and knowledge, I have like special things. I think like you could call that a prompt. It's just the instructions. But really what you're doing at the end of the day, if you start eventually thinking of chat GPT, like an assistant, for example, the assistant is only as good as the person directing them, unless, you know, they're going and doing a bunch of independent research and they're an expert in an area. But then it feels less like, I think there's a difference between maybe an assistant and an expert. And so if, you are an expert, you can turn your assistant into an expert. But if you're not an expert, then your assistant's probably just going to do a generally good job at something. And so I think that, um, you know, someone that's a really good lawyer, they're going to prompt chat GPT in a way that I would never know how they're like, make sure to reference like five different cases from case law and make sure to like do best practices for X, Y, and Z lawyer term that I have no idea what it means, right? Like, so in that sense, I do think that the prompting is big. Now, it's just interesting, because it doesn't feel like we're it's the word prompt anymore. Now it just feels like I'm just t- like, I use the voice thing on chat GPT all the time. So it just feels like it's, it's just, uh, you know, an assistant that I'm directing it to do stuff. But yeah, I think the prompt is important. So if you have expertise in an area, you're going to get way better results and output, uh, because you'll be able to get a lot more specific. Yeah, no, I like that perspective. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, in what everyone does in their own career or whatever their specialty is, there's a lot of like knowledge that, you don't even realize you have. So like you said, it's all second nature to know, okay, if I'm coming up with a, you know, a marketing plan, here are the things I need, um, you know? And so, but if you're, like you said, if you don't know, you can't just like create that out of nothing. So that's, that's a good way to look at it. I like that. So one thing that I did want to bring up on all of this with all the Apple rumors that I do think is important is earlier you asked, like, is there any reason why uh, Apple would go with Google Gemini? Because that was kind of the original rumor before OpenAI. And there is one interesting variable. That is the fact that Apple currently pays Google $8 billion. No, wait, it was something insane. It might have been $40 billion. I'm going to, I'll verify that and remind you about billions of dollars per year to make Google the default search engine on Safari. Um, And I wonder if that relationship is going to get in the way where Google's like, look, like, um, you know, we're paying you all this money to be the default search engine. We also want to be the default AI model. Or if Apple's going to just be like, no, look, that's one deal. This is completely separate. And if Google's like, well, 
you know, the assistant is sort of like search. So I wonder if Google is going to try to pull some sway to get um, themselves as the default model. I could see this as being something where OpenAI and Gemini are both fighting over and OpenAI pays Apple some sort of fee to be the default. But then at the same, but then really it's a discount because at the same time, Apple inevitably has to pay OpenAI for computing this stuff. You know what I mean? It's just like Google is like, more or less, it's not free, but it's like the cost is very low for Google searches. Um, and Google's making a ton of money off of uh, off of that. Whereas like, I, I don't know. And also like, will the Siri work without having a GPT premium account? I guess to be fair, OpenAI is now giving away GPT-4 for free. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting, right? Like how does that, what is the what is the monetization works? Who's paying who? I don't even know. Is OpenAI going to pay Apple or is Apple going to pay OpenAI for this? Well, and there's already a lot of... Uh... AI features embedded in Google search now, like it's, it comes up every time when you search something. So it's always like, yeah, I don't know that, that is a good point that I think it, it's 20 billion, by the way, I just looked it up. It's 20. Okay. It's 20, I was just 22, to yep. yep. 20 billion. Crazy. So yeah, that's, that's a fair point. Maybe it will be Google. I don't know. Okay. One last thing that I think uh, is interesting on all of this is inevitably um siri is going to get better apple's going to be the winner in this case i'm curious to see if apple will be able to pull out their own um ai model or if they will do what they've done with search and just like they've just left search to google they have totally the capability to have made their own search engine um but they've just left it to google and i wonder if they'll do the same thing uh it's it seems like crazy like they're a huge company they should be able to make their own ai models like you know facebook making ai models and stuff um I'll be really curious to see if Apple just completely steps back and just lets other people run the AI show and uh, just embeds it into their hardware in the future. That's what I'm that's what I'm interested in. Um, if you guys have some interesting use cases that you think will be unlocked by having uh, ChatGPT embedded into Siri and maybe on device, so not in the cloud, let us know. We love to hear it. Uh, send us a note on LinkedIn um, or drop us a review on the podcast. We hope that you all have an amazing rest of your day and we will catch you all next time.